welcome back to the channel. This is Ryan at Milligan Auto Services. So today we're out at this iVehicle Eurocargo. The customer has asked us to come out and fit a reverse camera kit, which we've already started. So I'll show you as quickly us conjuring the cable and then we'll crack on with the rest of it. So you've already started getting the cable conjuited up and the cable runs through that grommet there which we're fitted underneath so we're just going to run all the cable to the back of the, the truck make sure it's not got any uh, loops or anything in it and then cable tie it up and then wire in the actual uh, wire inside itself so i'll just show you here Just go underneath. You can see it's a mess just now, but we've just literally started running it. We're just getting the cable right to the back of the vehicle. And we're just going to run run the cable right along that chassis all the way to the back where the customer wants the reverse camera kit well reverse camera uh, where the customer wants the reverse camera mounted. So fairly simple job. It's not too difficult, so let's get it done. video a bit short but you can see I've got the reverse camera sitting where the customer wanted it didn't want any holes drilled in there so I've had to loop it round but all the cables fully fully conjuited all the way round into the chassis so all we need to do is hook up the monitor and that should be us finished so this is the monitor that's came with the kit so the customer's wanting it fitted there so we're going to need to try and bend the bracket over a bit just to get it sitting properly but it's not much here not much grief anyway to get it done that way then we just need to get the cables down the back there into here feed it with a fuse uh, once on an ignition feed which is easier for us so we don't need to look for a reverse input and then that's us good to go so that's us done and um, we've just tapped into one of the ignition live fuses so down there none of this stuff is mine that must be for the beatings or other sort of things so the wires just running into there that's our screen so if we turn the ignition on you can see we've got the reverse camera shown contrast is a wee bit bright so I'm probably going to adjust that uh, but apart from that, let's move on to the next one. Thanks for watching. So we're on to our next job, which is this Ford Transit 21 plate. Now we were here a couple of weeks ago and diagnosed this as a faulty alternator. So the customer supplied a second hand unit. Normally we don't fit second hand alternators because, well, for the obvious reason, reliability you can't return well they'll be able to return it but you don't know what sort of life it's had before fitting it to this van so but we'll fit it we'll fit it this time and see how we go it's a wind bus fault to the alternator so smart charging isn't working so first thing we're going to do is get the belt off let's crack on so we've removed the alternator belt all we need is a 15mm spanner you don't even really need a long one but we've just got that one handy you've got your two alternator bolts there obviously you want to disconnect the battery you can also disconnect it from here um, once that's done just take off the, the bush pipe there you've got a couple of possibly 7 mils. loosen them off and that'll give you a bit better access 
into the alternator to get it removed. So we've removed the boost pipe and what we've done is we've just put a glove over that so nothing can fall in there because it can happen without you knowing and then you start it up bye bye turbo so it looks pretty straightforward for here we've obviously got a Linbus connection plug that goes in the back we'll have a live cable as well but first of all we're just going to take off or two 13mm this will be a bolt I've got a bolt at the bottom as well however I'm not liking this alternator so it is the same alternator however look at the state of it it's had a, a hard life the one that's actually on this van looks better to be honest and just look at the corrosion and that on it if I didn't travel here Probably wouldn't have been fitting this. I'd have probably asked for well, should have asked for pictures of it first. Because that's just that's just asking for a comeback. However, we're going to mention that we're not going to give any labour warranty on it, obviously. These alternators new, they're like six hundred quid and there's a reason why they're that price. They need to be spot on, they're the exact number spec to this vehicle so <sighs> I hope I'm not wasting my time let's get this alternator off so that's the two bolts removed see we've got the bolts there just set them up we just need to get a lever bar into there and prise that open obviously we need to remove that 10mm no, sorry, that 8mm bolt there as well. A couple of cable tie connections. And we have also got another 8mm, which is just down there. Well, fairly simple. Let's just get it off. We'll get back to use once it's off the car. So we've got our alternator off. You can see this is our old one, which actually looks new. <laughs> and this is the, the one that's going to be getting fitted which is a bit grubby but you can see the part numbers both match so we're just going to I mean the clutch is working all right yep so both of them are working as they should visually it'll just be a case of getting this fitted and hoping for the best to be honest so everything's back together what do you think in the comments? Do you think this is going to work? Or do you think I've just wasted an hour of my time? I say an hour, probably about half an hour. But everything's back all together. So let's see. So I've just plugged in the top Don Phoenix Plus. If any of you are interested in this tool, um, there's a discount code in the description. Top Don have given me another discount code that starts on the 17th of me not too sure where it ends but i'll put that in the description as well so we're just letting that run through its self scan which we're going to what we'll do is we'll just get back to you once it's done that and this is a prime example of why you don't fit used alternators especially a van like this so i've plugged in a scope just to prove that i'm not in the wrong here so I'm going to take the graticle down I'm going to put the brightness up so you can see it better so if you look here that's the Lin bus I'm probed back into that now the Lin bus is currently unplugged from the alternator so we can see that there is a good Lin bus signal albeit my brightness is obscuring the reading a wee bit but there is a good Lin bus signal there as soon as I plug that used alternator back in that's what I get. Solid line. Lindbus is not happy with that alternator. What a colossal waste of time. Let's move on to the next one. So we've just went into TPS because we have got a Volkswagen T Rock that we attended about a week ago. That was for, it's actually under warranty still, it's a 72 plate. 
but unfortunately the dealer can't get it in for months to come so we attended this for a no indicator on the offside front headlight so the issue is the actual module on the back of the headlight now you can see those wee leds so the ones above that is obviously the amber ones are your indicator and the ones below that are your drl so what actually happens on the faulty one is the amber leds fall off the board more or less don't know if it's heat related or it's just poor connection i'm not too sure but you can actually change this without removing the full headlight assembly so i'm going to show you how to do that so i've got a wee bit of drive to go and get to it so hi so it's a headlight module that's the number in fact i've got the number on the box it's a 72 plate t-rock so it's led lamp module so to speak so we'll get that swapped out so we'll see he's there so we've arrived at this volkswagen t-rock we'll show you what the vehicle's doing just remember where i've put the keys so if we turn on the ignition i'm going to turn the indicator on obviously we've got hyper flashing you can see we've no indicator but as soon as we switch that back the led will come on the drl so the drl comes on so that's a telltale sign that the module itself or the control unit that sits in the back here is faulty so what we need to do is remove the torx so these two torx we've also got a torx bolt down there as well once that's removed it just gives you enough room to wiggle the actual control module out and then fit the new one So now that we've got these bolts out, so one, two, and three, and also you can lift that up as well, that gives a bit of extra room. It doesn't look like much room that you get, but that, that movement there is just enough to get into the bolts and get the actual unit out itself. So I'm using these just to get into the actual bolts themselves. They're just wee Torx bolts. They are T15s, if you look there. T15s if you can see that. Once you crack them they'll come out of your hands obviously the car's new so the bolts aren't going to be seized or shouldn't be seized so to speak. I've actually got the three bolts removed you should be able to just see that just lifts out and you've also got a plug internally there. I'm trying to show as much as possible however it's quite difficult to, to get the camera in. So you can see that there's the plugs there. You just need to disconnect them. Once we've got them disconnected, we'll show you what's happened with the old unit. So now that we've got those plugs disconnected, it'll just literally slide out of there. And you can see what's happened on this one is the LEDs have actually lifted off their pads. So a bit of a strange one. Maybe it's just a it's obviously got to be some sort of defect with these from the build but we've got a, a new one anyway so i don't know if anybody can go with that part number it's sitting there l9020137 one or i've got the part number on the box that i showed you in the previous video don't know why that's happened don't know if it's just a poor quality shoulder job or what or the LEDs maybe get too hot and they end up sliding off, but LEDs aren't really known to get hot. So we'll get the, the new one fitted in. These do not need programmed, which is good. Make sure you don't come in contact with anything. So first of all, we're going to get this, this plug connected in. So we don't need to mess about in there. We'll also get our main plug connected in as well once it's a wee bit further in. You can see that just gives us a wee bit more wiggle room. And then 
and this connection will slide in there. So that's that clipped into place. It's just a case of sliding it in. So it should go in fairly simple. You can always move back your headlight if you have any issues. Don't want to be damaging the, the new unit as well. These aren't deer by the way. These are actually quite decently priced. I think they were £65. So they're £65, which isn't the, the most expensive part that we've, we've came across. So we'll just get a couple of bolts in this and we'll test it out before fully fastening, fastening it on down. You obviously, you're, you're better with skinnier hands like myself to get into this job. If you've got big, big fat fingers, then I think you're going to be in trouble. So let's give it a try. Did we fix it? Or does it need some form of programming? <laughs> That's the worrying thing. I don't think it will. So you can see there, indicators back to working. So once we switch that off, it should go back to the DRL. So we'll just switch the indicator off. You can see the DRL works as it should. So this control unit at the back of the headlamp, it's going to be a common thing, I think, with these LEDs falling off. Why they do it, I don't know. But the exact cost of the actual part is £65.47 pence fairly simple to swap out once you've got it swapped out it does not need any adaption any programming on this particular model so yeah that's that so again thanks for watching i'll see you next time